Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. To add to my collection of my Gcash G-Invest videos, we've got another one today. Gcash seems to be aggressive in giving you many options on how you can grow your money through the Gcash app, and I'm glad to present to you four new investment funds that Gcash will be offering to the public very soon. But first things first, G-Invest is now known as G-Funds. G-Funds houses the different UITFs and mutual funds that are within the Gcash app. It makes sense to me because as shared in previous videos, Gcash is also launching global stocks, Philippine stocks, and crypto. Let's move on now to the four new funds that G-Funds is offering to the public for you guys to see, is it gonna be worth your while? Let's go. So again, Gcash is launching four new investment funds these funds will again be brought to us by Atram. Among the four, three of these will be monitoring the movement of the global markets, and one fund here will be monitoring the local Philippine market. So let's cover these four funds today. I've decided to change it up a bit. Usually, in my previous Gcash and Atram videos, I'll talk about the fund, talk about the benchmark and their target fund, and I also talk about their historical performance. For this video, I'm making it a little simpler. I won't get into too much technicality. I'm just gonna be summarizing the funds in the simplest way that I could. Also, full disclosure, I'm doing away with the historical performance because these funds are practically brand new. I mean, only two of the four funds have actually been around for at least three years. So as historical performance would be what we mostly based our decision on before. For this instance, it's not really gonna be as applicable. We're really focusing on what the fund really stands for. So for the first fund, let's start with the odd one out. Let's start with the ATRAM, Philippine Sustainability and Development Growth Fund. Basically, this fund invests in Philippine companies that have a positive impact in terms of the environment or social development of the Philippines as a whole. So looking at the roster of the companies that this fund invests in, it looks like the usual suspects. So there's Ayala Land, RCBC, Century Pacific. To be completely honest, I don't know how much this really differs from previous funds or other local Philippine stock index funds that we've talked about. But I guess the selling point here or your angle for wanting to invest in this fund is that you actually care about the environment and the social development of the Philippines. I previously haven't tracked the performance of these funds that are more on the social and environmental impact as to how it translates to bottom line sales and profits and if it actually does work out as an investment for you i'm not entirely sure but again yes if you have that advocacy to be investing in companies that are not only making profits but are also making our environment a more sustainable place then this fund might be for you do take note though that amongst the four new funds this one has the highest trust fee at 1.82%. So let's move on to the three global funds. The first would be the Atram Global Healthcare Feeder Fund. By the way, since all these funds are brought to us by Atram, so I'll try to not use Atram too much just so I stop repeating myself. So the Global Healthcare Feeder Fund, as the name suggests, would be investing in the health industry. So I think a lot of fund management companies actually saw the opportunity to put up a fund that would be focusing on healthcare alone. Obviously, we're still reeling off from the recent effects of the pandemic. We know that the pharmaceutical companies really played a crucial and profitable role in the fight against COVID. So the Global Healthcare Feeder Fund is composed of pharmaceutical companies such as Roche, AstraZeneca, but it's not limited to just pharmaceutical companies. On the fund prospectus, it says that anything that has to do with healthcare could be part of this fund. So if you're a fan of the medical industry, you think that this is a very profitable industry, then this fund might be something that you're interested in. So for all these global funds, the starting investment is at 1,000 pesos. The additional investment is also at 1,000 pesos with the exception of the Global Healthcare Feeder Fund which has the additional investment minimum at only 500 pesos. Let's move on. The second is the Global Infra Equity Feeder Fund. Now, as the name suggests, this fund invests in companies that are in the infrastructure sector. So the companies in this fund would be in a wide array of different industries, oil and gas storage, there's transportation and railroads, there's renewable energy, there are specialized streets, 
So these are just some of the industries that the Infra Equity Feeder Fund is invested in. Just to name a few of these companies, Shenery Energy, uh, Crown Castle, American Tower Rail, and there's also a Canadian rail company that this fund invests in. I've invested in this fund in the last month or a month and a half ago. It wasn't via Gcash. I invested in this fund via Seedbox Philippines. If you want to know more about Seedbox, you can check out my previous videos. So anyway, I invested in this fund because I felt like it was a different approach, a different category to invest in. To refresh your memory, we had the Global Consumer Trends Feeder Fund and the Global Technology Feeder Fund. We were really working with consumer companies that we were familiar with, you know, Amazon, Visa, but also consumer companies such as Walmart. So I wanted to invest in companies that are investing in infrastructure because again, as the pandemic would show, infrastructure would be really the last ones to go. I mean, when we were all locked down and stuff, um, people were still really moving on the logistics side, not only locally via Grab or Lalamove or whatsoever, but really, you know, the shipping lines were continuing to run. Even the airline industry, which faced a lot of challenges, really pivoted to logistics. So for me, I probably didn't have an appreciation of infrastructure previously, seeing that infrastructure would again be the last one to go. I think that investing in an infrastructure fund is actually quite advantageous, especially in the long term. But lastly, the third global fund and the fourth of the new Gcash investment funds, we have here the Global Equity Opportunity Fund. Now, this is a little harder for me to explain. I think it's a little bit of a mixture of the Global Healthcare Feeder Fund, the Infra Equity Fund, and also comprised of the Global Technology Feeder Fund that we previously talked about. So from my understanding, that's practically it. It's still industrial, but also there's a mix of consumer side. It's not going to be your very big commercial brands it's still primarily industrial. So for the companies here, let me get my notes again because they're not too familiar to me personally. Aww. So there's First Solar, which is, I guess, in the production of solar power. There's Norsky Hydro, which probably is renewable energy. And the most familiar company is Deer & Company. So Deer & Company is John Deere, uh, you know, those tractors in the United States. There's definitely a consumer side to John Deere with their branding, but I think they're also very big on B2B and supplying farmers and whatever industrial products that they have. Again, it won't be too familiar to us because it's mostly comprised of heavily industrialized companies. So would I recommend these funds? As shared, I'm actually invested in one of them already. I think this would be a good contrast Again, previously, it was really all about on the consumer side, but this time around, this industrial infrastructure and healthcare approach will be really a good balance to your investment portfolio. Let me know in the comment section which of the funds you are looking to invest in. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, guys, and happy investing.